amazingly, in chapter 26, we have a saying in English like father, like son. Isaac does the same thing with Abimelech. Now, why is this name showing up again? In chapter 12, it was Pharaoh. In chapter 20, it was Abimelech. And now many, many years later, it's Abimelech again. Well, Abimelech was a title. Abimelech meant something like the king father. It was a title like Pharaoh. Melech means king in Hebrew. So this is not the same individual. This is somebody with the same title. And there's a famine again. So Isaac goes to a place called Gerar. And there is a king of the Philistines there called Abimelech. Um, the Lord had told him not to go down to Egypt, but to stay in the, in the land. And I will be with you and bless you, you and your descendants. I will, he, he renews the covenant to Isaac that he made with his father Abraham. He gives credit to Abraham in verse 5, chapter 26, verse 5, because Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge. So Isaac lived in Gerar, but he's afraid of his wife's beauty. He says, say, say you are my sister. I'm afraid to tell everybody you're my wife because this, the men of this place will kill me because you're so beautiful. And so the very same thing happens in chapter 26 with Isaac that happened in chapter 12 and chapter 20 with his father Abraham. And also, um, God has to step in. Uh, and providentially, it, it doesn't happen this time through the Lord appearing to Abimelech. God providentially uh, arranges for Abimelech to see Isaac touching a woman in a way that you would not touch your sister. And so he knows. And, he's, and he says, why have you done that? What, what, look what could have happened, and you would have brought this terrible, um, this terrible curse on us, this terrible punishment on our, us. So, the same thing happens. Verse 15 says that the wells um, which were dug in the days of Abraham's father were stopped up by the Philistines. And Isaac leaves, Abimelech asks him to leave, and Isaac digs more wells. And they, but then those who did not dig the wells quarrel and say, the, father, the, the water is ours. So he had to move away again and dig more wells. Then the Lord appears to him. He renews the covenant again in verse 24. I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. So he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord. But you notice he dug the wells first and then he built an altar. Abraham built an altar and then he dug the wells. Here's the problem. It's very, very difficult to pass on the faith of the first generation to the second generation with the same power. And a mother or father who really loves the Lord, who really love the Lord, this is the great prayer of their life, that their children will also love the Lord more than the father or mother, not less. But very, very often, something is lost in the second generation. The same is true in spiritual wealth, just as it is in money. We usually say that the first generation makes the money, the second generation enjoys the money, and the third generation loses the money. Well, more than one Bible teacher has said <clears throat> that Isaac is the lesser son of a greater father and that Isaac is the lesser father of a greater son. Probably the greatest thing we know about Isaac is what happened when he was a young man, a teenager, in Genesis 22, when he laid down on that altar and let his father time down. We never really see Isaac rise above that. 
sadly, sometimes men look back and realize that they were more fervent for God in their youth before they got old and before they got comfortable and before they started thinking about other things besides the Lord. Um, by the end of chapter 26, Esau gets married. And he not only gets married once, he gets married twice. And he gets married to pagan women. It says in verse 34 that when Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, the daughter of Be'eri the Hittite, and Basimoth, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. And they brought grief to his parents. They brought grief to Isaac and Rebekah. Many of you are single. Before you get married, ask yourself the question, will this marriage bring joy to my mother and father? And father? Before you fall in love, ask that question. And while we're here, let me just mention one thing practically. If you are single, the most important thing you can do is to marry somebody who loves God more than they love you. That's the most important thing. If you marry somebody who loves you more than they love God, you're marrying an idolater. An idol is anything we love more than we love God. C.S. Lewis put it this way, if we love first things first, we can love second things better than we could have if we had loved second things first. Let me say it another way. What he means is, if my wife loves God more than she loves me, she can love me better and she can love me more than she could have if she had loved me more than God. You understand? God is not a rival. God is not a competitor to any lawful love. God is the source. He's, he's the supply. He is the energy to true and lawful loves. He's not a rival or a competitor. Remember that. Esau showed his great carnality in the choices he made, in the way he despised his birthright, and in his choice of wives. I'm sure they were pretty, and I'm sure he wanted the immediate pleasure, just like he wanted that lunch more than he wanted his future inheritance. He's a man who's very consistent in the way he acts. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.